Greetings, I'm Christopher Long, and welcome to Face to Face, my bite-sized video series in which I serve up some great conversations in some groovy locations. In this second edition, we're at Phase 2 Studios in Knoxville, Tennessee, with musician, songwriter, and health and nutrition guru, Misty Marcus. We'll be getting the scoop on the upcoming new album from Misty's band Black Eyed Soul, as well as her insights on the keto and carnivore diets, her commitment to sobriety, and why she loves Mel Robbins and Joe Rogan. So, let's get to it. Grab yourself a bowl of popcorn, because it's time to get face to face with Misty Marcus. Misty. Yes. Thanks Chris. so much for inviting me up to Knoxville to your rec Welcome. your recording facility where you and Andrew are working on your new Black Eyed Soul album. It's very exciting. Yeah. And uh, I was just glad to come up from Florida and hang out with you guys and see what's going on with your new album. Hear some songs and see what's going on with that process. Thanks for coming. I am a huge fan of your YouTube channel. You launched not too long ago, right. sort of what I call a health and nutrition and wellness sort of YouTube channel called Love Style. And I'm a subscriber and a huge fan. I watch all of your episodes. I'm riveted. Thank you. Tell me about that. Let's talk about your YouTube. Yeah. What led you to that? What motivates you? Where are you headed? I want to know everything about Love Style. So Love Style is my own personal project because I want to clean up my life. And a lot of people start YouTube channels, including myself, to keep them on track. Because you have an audience that is kind of relying on you to keep it straight so you can then save them some time when they go on their health journey, for example, or lifestyle journey, a better lifestyle journey. That's why we call it Love Style. When did you launch Love Style? So, the easiest way to say that is 2020, January 1st. So the reason that I started Love Style was to talk about my success with the keto diet and a little bit of the carnivore diet, which is basically a low carb diet, which is huge now, but nobody knew about it a couple years ago. So I was very, very excited because I had lost like a bunch of weight. I gave up drinking without any cravings and the low carb process helps you not get those cravings back, even for alcohol, which surprised me. So you're talking about, in your channel, as a fan yeah. who watches your episodes faithfully, Yeah. you, to me, seem to have three sort of go-to bullet points that you are particularly passionate about. Mm -hmm. If we can break down each one of those sure. specifically, yeah. you discuss the keto diet, yep. you discuss the carnivore diet, mm -hmm. and then you also discuss your recent dedication, commitment to a sober lifestyle. If we can back up, if you could address each of those components sure. and tell me how you discovered what led you to each one of those, how it is affecting your life now, how you see maybe moving forward with each of those three passion points, we'll say. Passion points, I love that. So the keto diet was my first passion point. And after losing weight, I realized like I do have actual control over the shit that I think is like uh, subconscious. As we all think things are just a habit, we can never get out of it, this is just how my family grew up. Um, which led to the fact that, wow, I actually have control over the decisions I make at every single point. So that gives you the confidence to then try something more extreme, whether it's taking on painting, like something, um, that I never even thought of in my life. Um, maybe I can stretch myself with my work. Uh, writing, for example, songwriting became easy for me. I started to become very, very, very laser focused, getting the toxins out of my body. As a result of 
diet. Diet. Specifically, Very keto so. diet, sort of a gateway. Yes. To a whole different sort of reality, a whole different kind of lifestyle. Exactly. Just based on you getting that, becoming laser focused in terms of diet. Yes. So basically the idea behind keto and carnivore, which is just keto 2.0, to heal even faster because I had high blood pressure and it wasn't going away with just the meat and vegetables. So I looked into it and it's a fasting mimicking diet. So this is more than just beginning to put healthier content into your body. You're talking about- I like that healthier content. Harnessing mm -hmm. healing. Healing. mechanisms. Absolutely. So you're talking about based on these two diet components, mm -hmm. you're talking about personal health, proactive and retroactive. So you're setting yourself up for the future as well as perhaps healing your body from maybe mistakes of the past. Absolutely. Well put. Um, when you learn what's bad for you, all you have to do when you try to improve your health is take, oh, it's really just removing bad stuff. And then what you come to find is meat and vegetables are the best for you. There's some other foods you can have, but if you were like me, if you're anything like me and you have, e have to have either five drinks or no drinks and be an extremist as I am, you may want to even push it further and go to carnivore, which is meat, dairy, and eggs, and no vegetables for quicker what, healing. But what about fruit? I love fruit. I want some strawberries. I want my cherries. I want blueberries. Mm -hmm. I want a banana. Sometimes I'll even eat a peach. What's wrong with fruit? Why don't we see fruit in those two diets? Because our ancestors waited for summertime for the fruit to be available. So having fruit every day in the winter daily is just not what our body is supposed to consume. So having sugar is not the devil, you know, um, having fruit occasionally, maybe 10% of the time, instead of every day, 100% of the time is more the concept. There is a downside to that then. That may yes. not be as healthy as what I thought, but it's natural. It grows off trees. It grows up out of the ground. It's fruit. It's better There's than some... a Twinkie. Okay. So we can start there. Okay. So if you, for example, love fruit and you're, let's just say, addicted to mm -hmm. the sweet taste, mm -hmm. it's better than a packaged food, which is a Franken food. A pack, anything in a package is not food. There's like no food in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this would shock you, salad dressings. Stuff that's like, but I'm eating a salad. It's a and then you dressing. kill it by putting all the stuff on. I know for a fact that the most popular food for dieters is salad with chicken on it. Let me repeat that. Salad, I know you're having salad with chicken on it. That is what everyone's eating besides chicken and broccoli. Is that wrong? No unless you're putting salad dressing on it and it's bought in a store. If you're not making your own salad dressing, or you could do oil and vinegar, would be like light years ahead of the way you've been doing it. I don't eat dressing on my salad you're ever. You're good. See? Never have. So uh, instead of being the weirdo, that's actually... Very much healthier. Excellent, thank you. So, so the- I've been affirmed here. <laughs> that's great though. Most people can't stand it that way. Mm -hmm. I'm one of them. So I had to make my own dressing. I have been mocked, ridiculed, really? and belittled for years, labeled Not as, even a, oil and vinegar. as a walking human freak show because I don't put dressing. Why? I need to know. Because the vegetables. What is the secret? The vegetables are so naturally delicious. You would love keto Just then. so crisp. <laughs> And you know, you, you get the little bit of cuke and the, the, the tomato and it doesn't, it's just the natural, beautiful, individual, singular flavors that God gave us. And then we're going to take it mm. and cover it with a bunch of this sour mucusy looking. It's like, it's like taking a Picasso 
and then a can of spray paint and then thinking <laughs> that we're going to you just ruined this work of art so that's so how i am with the, the salad yeah and not even be from a health perspective that you're coming from but just because i think it ruins the flavor how interesting yeah now you are actively and i'm asking this you're actively balancing both the carnivore and the keto? I'm doing what I call a 90% carnivore diet. And people probably hate it because it's like, you're not a full carnivore. What? You don't have the right to call yourself, and I don't like labels anyway. So sure. fine, fine, come at me. But 90% um, carnivore, which means 10% of the time I allow fruit, low carb fruits usually, but I'll have an apple occasionally. It that is not a low carb fruit. As a, a, an, an outsider, yeah. you know, it would seem like your body naturally at some point needs some type of a vegetable or fruit intake just to kind of balance things out. How wrong am I? Well, there's not a ton of research so far on the carnivore diet and a lot of people feel the way you do. But it's kind of becoming known slowly that what we thought about food thus far has been so wrong. Okay. Even sweet foods that grow on trees, which seems like ridiculous, right? Um, who did it grow for? That's what I want to know. Is it for birds? Do birds eat full apples? Who eats apples besides a human? So why would they make a delicious red and we're naturally drawn to it and we're naturally going to be in the forest and pick it up even back in the day and eat it? But what has happened to our foods? They have been created. Even fruit is not the fruit that was the fruit back a thousand years ago. Uh -huh. For example, a banana looks nothing like an old banana. So there have been um, people messing with um, hybridizing food to be so much of a dopamine hit to the brain when you eat a sweet banana. I mean, think about a banana, how delicious it is. It's uncanny and unnatural that something could grow like that and be that freaking good. Right. So we get addicted to that, but it's been changed over the years. So is it bad for me? Is my banana yes. daily banana diet yes. is bad for me? Yes. The biggest breakfast that everyone is having, besides I know what you're having for lunch, salad with chicken on it. Mm -hmm. And most people are having the dressing, but not you. Without the dressing, salad with chicken is good. Yes. Okay, now let's get to our tour of banana. Banana and oatmeal in the morning is a mistake. I know my dad, I was on the phone with my dad for Father's Day, I talked to him. He goes, well, well, what about, he's just edging into asking me things because he hates the answers. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want the full, the full thing. I can't get, Chris, I can't get my parents to go on keto. And that will be a video I'm going to do pretty soon. But it's so contrary to, to what we've been, you know. So is a bunch a of other warm, stuff. warm, wholesome, nutritious yeah. oatmeal breakfast. Stick to your ribs. Oatmeal, energy, banana, you, and a juice. And you put some, you some juice and you put some sliced fruit. It's a healthy, natural, stick to your ribs breakfast. Mm -hmm. Terrible That's for you. It. Terrible. Three mistakes. Juice, toast. Let's do four. Four mistakes. I'm getting loud here. Juice, oatmeal, the toast. And the banana, get rid of it. Eggs and bacon for breakfast. Really? Eggs and bacon, no bread, no juice. Get the juice out of your You life. are a buzzkill. I know. That's why I can't force it on people. My biggest problem having the YouTube channel, because you asked earlier, is I can't force my, it's not my opinion, it's my experience. I can't force it on others who didn't ask for my two cents. And like even with my parents, I, they could come off their medication, Chris. Mm -hmm. You could take no medication. I don't take any medication. I was on blood pressure medication for years and other stuff. That is what is particularly effective to me as a viewer of yours. Yeah. The, that I get from your message is that your presentation is not 
facts and figures and no, and, I hate and that graphs stuff and so on. And you don't have the white doctor's smock coming from a medical perspective. And you're quite mm -hmm. honest that you are not a trained medical professional. Right. What you have to offer is honest personal experiences or the results from your personal experiences after yeah. years and how this diet has affected your high blood pressure or whatever issues that you've dealt with. It's yeah. all personal firsthand results. Yeah. And that as a viewer is what makes your love style series so much more valuable than other content that's out on the interweb. What's interesting is I've listened to all of it. Mm -hmm. So I actually know some of that facts and figure, some of the facts and figures and why, but I don't think that that's a good motivator because if you're coming in cold and you want to clean up your lifestyle and get off your meds and you're 50 years old, like I'm about to be, I don't want facts and figures. Tell me what works. Tell mm -hmm. me what's worked for you. Sure. Tell me why you haven't gotten fat after losing weight. Cause what I do see, and even with keto, I see this. People will lose a bunch of weight very, very quickly. And then they gain it freaking back. And I hate it, Chris. Even I though they're it. still on the diet, they're gaining it back? No, they don't stay on it they, because okay. it's not sustainable. Because gotcha. they haven't learned how to eat. Literally, I know how to eat. I know what not to eat, which is really learning how to eat. For more than 25 years, you have been pursuing your music passion yeah. with your musical partner and husband, Andrew Marcus, in your band, Black Eyed Soul, mm -hmm. which is why we're here at this fabulous studio, Phase 2 studio in Knoxville, Tennessee, is I, I want to get, as also a fan of your music, I'm wanting to get the behind the scenes scoop on the new album that you and Andrew are working on. Okay. But what I find also interesting about that is that you've had, and you just gave away your age, that you're 50 years old, which is something not that- Not yet, let's not push it. You should be embraced and applauded. There is value in the experiences. I don't think anybody should ever feel bad about surviving another day and making it another week. So bravo, we made it to, 50 and in some cases way beyond still 50. upright but after almost 30 years 25 30 years leading living pursuing that rock and roll lifestyle with your band mm -hmm. doing gigs making records on the road and so on you came to a certain recent crossroads where you really wanted to clear the deck, so to speak, and clean house artistically with the way you and Andrew are now approaching your music. Yeah. Nutritionally right. with your keto and your carnivore. Mm -hmm. And despite how big of a fan I am of your music and despite what an avid viewer I am of your love style YouTube series, what I find particularly interesting about your story, particularly inspiring, what I find particularly personally encouraging about you and your current Misty Marcus message is your recent laser focused commitment and dedication to sobriety. Let's talk about that for a minute or two. Okay. So I was an alcoholic and um, it took me so many years to realize it. I just was, thought I was having a good time. Was an alcoholic. So, Do you think that's something we ever get away from? Or is it sure. as we heard, once alcoholic, always an alcoholic. You have a, a practicing alcoholic and then you have an alcoholic in recovery. If you... Are, do you see it that way? Um, it's kind of funny that you ask that because I'm not even sure. 
Okay. I hate labels because I believe you can change and pivot. Sure. And kind of be reborn as I have feel like I have been. So when someone keeps telling you you're something and you don't feel like you're something, um, it could have a bad effect if it's a negative sure. connotation. So I always thought the word alcoholic was offensive. But of course the reason I think it's offensive is probably because I'm an alcoholic. So me not choosing to use that word very often is part of a flaw that I have in myself because I'm ashamed of it. So I never went to AA. So the principles of AA I do realize are once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. I think, I think that's what they believe. And the 12 step program. So I did it with, I, I got off of alcohol with love and support from Andrew. What maybe not AA, what us weird faith people would say mm -hmm. you had a come to Jesus this moment. Yes. You had a moment of clarity. Yeah. I have been sober now 18 years. Congrats. I did not go through AA. Oh, I didn't go okay. through a step program. Our two stories, and this is another reason why I'm so personally invested in your story and listening to everything that you have to share and your testimony. Yeah. Is that our stories are very similar in that we were both fall down slobbering degenerate drunks yet we See, both even that offends me <laughs> we got full got a hold of full sobriety but it was both through a very clear come to jesus type moment of clarity and revelation and where the the light bulb just t comes yeah. on yeah um or some people call it rock bottom but we all have our own different rock bottom moments, our own unique rock bottom experiences and places. Yeah. Walk me through what yours looked like. So my rock bottom or coming to Jesus moments in my life when it, we're talking about alcoholism was um, we were going to go on a vacation, Andrew and I, to Serpent Mound, Ohio. Ohio which is a mystical place, a place where you can get good energy. Peace. Peace. Love. Some miraculous thing is supposed to happen, and something did. Mm -hmm. um, I, I quit alcohol that day. Now, I don't know if that was a conscious effort or something from above, from a higher that day, source, but... The first day that you arrived at this spiritual place? Yes. What did you think on the front end, what did you think that experience was going to look like? I really didn't know. I'd never been to a place like that. And I was still early in, on my journey of trying to become more enlightened in life and realize the mistakes I've made along the way. But the rock bottom part of that story is I did not want to go on that vacation. It was in Amish country. We were going to this place that just looked like grass, basically, with mounds on it. And we had seen pictures, so I was like, all right, this is going to be boring. And I had been used to having some kind of party with me with my drinks, even if it was Andrew and I. And Andrew doesn't drink. I always rock had, and roll, man. You I always drink. had my rock and roll lifestyle because I had a drink in my hand. And darn, I, my hands were still, and people don't talk about this, but... If you are spending a lot of time doing this, like you're missing out on this. You know, you could be writing with your hands, not holding a cup. What a waste of time. You did not expect when you, you realized where your destination on this trip was, you probably didn't expect to arrive no. where you wound up arriving. 
I yeah, so I I'm gonna getting it up. sober was not one of your expectations making the trip. No, it was not. But um, I wasn't excited to go on the trip because I knew it was gonna be boring, or I decided it was gonna be boring because there would be no alcohol. Because there the would be no alcohol. Place. It was Amish country. There would be no bar. There How would be am no I gonna people. get through this vacation if there's no place to drink? Yeah, well, right. And, and also the people who drink with you mm. is part of the party, and I like to say. Um, when you're the life of the party and the party is gone and disappears, then you're just left with life. So then you have to face life sober. And that's the hard part. But would, I wasn't excited and I realized that's messed up. Would you say then, because it sounds like what we're, we're talking about here, that you had a problem? With oh, I alcohol? definitely, yes. So. If we want to call me an alcoholic, I'm going to accept that. It was a a life issue that needed to be addressed, that needed to be fixed. Yes. Sick and tired of being sick and tired? Yes, I wasn't achieving any goals. Uh, let me rephrase that. I wasn't achieving personal goals. I had my band. Andrew and I have always been writing great music, but I wanted to start to do more songwriting. And he had... Andrew had um, written most of the stuff over the years. And I was slacking. I was supposed to learn bass. Now I'm playing bass. And um, I wanted to hold a little more of my weight in the band because now we're a duo. There's just two of us. So even though we're tracking, he shouldn't be doing most of the work. I want to contribute to our musical process. And I want to contribute to the entire thing. And now I have an experience where songwriting um, might benefit. Getting focused based on new diet, being focused based on your new perspectives through sobriety, yeah. you believe that has opened up your creative door to achieve greater heights in doing your art painting, music, etc. Yes, my third eye is opening and okay. the seven chakras in the body, the energy centers. If these are not aligned, we're off. We're not our best. We're not our best version. And when you take the toxins out of your diet first, that's step one, and alcohol, of course, and you move over to starting to feel like elated, Elated, I feel elated, happy to be alive, almost high, naturally high on ketosis. That's where the word keto comes from. You're in ketosis, and that's why people fast in different religions, monks and, and so on, will fast to get that feeling that they are tapped in with a higher source or source, the universe, God. So this keeps me clear, keeping the toxins out. Now you're talking about how that freedom has opened your creativity, your third eye, mm -hmm. in terms of particularly your music. Yeah. We're here at your studio in Knoxville, Phase 2 Studios. Phase 2. Where you and Andrew have been working on the new Black Eyed Soul album. Yeah. So let's talk about that creativity and okay. how you're moving forward with your new album. What, do we have a title for our new album? We do not have a title yet. Okay. Um, but I'm proud of the fact that I have been able to contribute more songwriting and holding my part of the bargain up. How far into the production process are we on the well, new Black Eyed Soul album? Well, instrumentation is done. And we are putting the salt and pepper on. Songs are written. Songs are written. Basic tracks cut. Yeah. And now vocals. we're polishing. We're doing vocals and polishing. Would that yes. be? Yes, that's okay. appropriate. That's where we're at. And because of your new, fresh lease on life, so to speak. Absolutely. You are taking a more active, productive role in creating that Black Eyed Soul music. Yes, that's a good way to put it. Now, Misty, as I walk around 
on tour checking out the Phase 2 studios here in Knoxville. It's particularly fascinating to me because you and Andrew are involved in so many different creative artistic endeavors. Downstairs, you've got your paintings and so on. Upstairs in your studio, it's a state-of-the-art facility. It just fascinates me. But it, I also find it particularly interesting, all the unique instruments and percussion devices that you've got hanging around. I found these wild looking drums <laughs> hanging on the walls. What can you tell me about this? So these are buffalo drums. Buffalo drums. Yeah. Okay. I don't really know if that means it's the skin of a buffalo. I don't know that much about how they're made. Okay. But. Um, can I hit one? Yeah, let's. Okay. You just get your drum okay. on. Okay. It's good for meditation. And I am a drummer. You're a drummer. You like to bang things. I do. So from get to time banging, to time. Chris. So I look at this and I've played drums for years, but I'll be honest with you. Yeah. You're not likely to ever catch me banging on one of these things. You've been talking a lot lately, not only in this interview, but in your other social media content, yeah. a lot about spirituality. Yeah. And that it is something that you and Andrew are both involved with as a couple on a daily basis? Yes, very much so. So somebody like me, my daily regimen begins at Starbucks every morning with my Bible, yeah. and I have my daily Bible study regimen. Sure. What can you tell me about your daily spiritual regimen with you and Andrew? So the first words out of our mouth to each other and the universe are I love you. On a daily basis, as on you begin daily your basis. daily program. Several times a day. I feel like that's something everyone does, but maybe it isn't. Well, I'll be honest with you. It's something that you're very passionate about, and Andrew is as well. But the meditation is something, personally, I couldn't see myself ever being involved in. And I was you about a year and a half ago. I was like, okay... I cannot sit still with my own thoughts for five minutes. How the heck am I going to do the breathing? And there's all these rules and which one should I choose? Because there's different types of meditation. So if you've never meditated before, if you've never meditated before, five minutes, three minutes of silence. Don't worry about if you're breathing right. Don't worry about if you left your body. Don't worry about tapping into source the first few times you do it. Now it is actually, re I have rehearsed for this. I'm big on rehearsal, especially on love style. That's my, I have a lot of catchphrases. And one of them is rehearsing for your health. So every single thing you've ever, ever learned was not easy when you first started. And that includes meditation. One minute. You could start with and a lot of people can just call it prayer it's prayer for yourself it's prayer to god it's prayer to the universe it's prayer to being grateful to be alive and this is something you and andrew are doing together what would is there a particular component or part of that routine that you would do together every day so Andrew and I are really interested these days in sound healing. And even the buffalo drums are a form of sound healing. And you just choose something that makes you feel relaxed. And uh, there are mystical properties in stones, in gemstones, and even things like uh, petrified wood has a vibration, a high vibration as does most things on the earth that are touching the earth. That's why we love being out in nature. So these things can assist if you're trying to get in the zone even faster when you're trying to meditate to hold stones in your hands. And your natural personality 
will be attracted to certain stones that your body needs but it actually assists to get you in the zone faster so using stones is very very helpful and also sound healing singing bowls you, you know you ring your singing bowls and you sit and it, it does something the vibration and the the hertz that it vibrates at has a lot to do with music which is really funny and kind of intertwines with the things we're talking about today especially being a musician um, this is all related that's why when you get a crowd together and they are really especially these big festivals when we're all in it together listening to something you have to admit there is something mystical and something that raises our vibration to a point where we can never really explain it but there's nothing that moves you like sound music um, raises the spirit Chris my biggest fear is being on my deathbed at the end of my life and you look back because I know this happens and he said did I do all of the things that I wanted to do your bucket list your life list your the stuff on your vision board did you do them and your former lifestyle was perhaps keeping you from achieving the best you. Absolutely true. I didn't know it at the time. And if there are people out there who don't realize it and are unconsciously repeating the same things over and over and getting the same result, that whole saying, try something different. It's time to pivot and start with diet because I do think it's the key. Now, aside from everything else that we've discussed, you are an artistic person and so on. What are you listening to right now? What are you watching on TV? What are you reading? What is it out? What is the other art outside of Phase 2 Studios that you're creating? What is it out there from other artists that's speaking to you? Right now, I'm very um, much in my head. I'm trying to pull it back down and get into my heart chakra a little bit more and I'm going to work on that this year. I want more and more information. It's like I'm addicted to information. Do you have a favorite show that you're watching right now? Yes, I love, a, my favorite person is Mel Robbins right now. Okay. Love Mel Robbins. If you haven't checked out Mel Robbins, damn, is she good. How do we do that? Where on do you, YouTube. Where do you, she is on YouTube. She is on YouTube. She has a bestseller out, two bestsellers out, and she's killing it. I just respect her so much for being so what, honest. What is it about her? What, for those who are not familiar with Mel Robbins, what is her content and what is it about that that is resonating with you? Well, she's very relatable. I feel like she's me. <laughs> this sounds weird. I feel like she's another version of me in the way that we don't want to sell anybody anything. And that's even something that I struggle with, Chris, is on my channel, I don't ever want to be salesy. And we'll flash our album at the end of the video because I don't want to sell anybody anything. I just want them to follow the advice so they can improve their life. I almost don't even care if they watch my channel more than once. If they watch one video and follow the advice that has maybe worked for me could work for them. If they follow the advice of my content, I would be much more pleased than if they keep watching my videos. And Mel Robbins reminds me of that kind of person. She almost doesn't care if you buy her book. She wants you to thrive. She really wants it for others and I want it for others. You also, as I know, are a huge Joe Rogan fan. Yeah. Um, He's been something of a con more controversial than usual in recent weeks. Let's talk about Joe. Did you catch my video about Joe Rogan? Of course I did. <laughs> it really wasn't about him, but um, he is another person I look up to. He speaks truth. He really does not care if you like it. And I like that. I like that a lot. 
That is something that I hope is coming across when it comes to love style on the channel because no one wants bullshit. No one wants BS. So if I could keep that going, which I think I can, that's just a natural way to be and we can all agree no one wants the BS and no one wants to be sold to. So. Misty Marcus, yes. thank you so much. Thanks for being transparent. Oh, Thanks for sharing all of your insights. Thanks for showing us around the studio and yeah. sharing your art and your new, your new music. It was super exciting. And thank you so much for the invitation and talking thank to you, me today. Chris.